Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Retro Game Did a Com video, we're going to be discussing a 14 compute unit RX 560, which AMD have silently launched and is causing some bad publicity because AMD are not clearly marking the lower end SKU compared to the standard RX 560, which features 16 compute units. And then we're also going to have an update on Coffee Lake working with older Intel hardware. Specifically yesterday you may remember that we covered the i3-8350K working on a 100 series board. Well now the reverse is also true with Coffee and KB Lake functioning quite well in a 300 series Coffee Lake motherboard. But first things first, AMD. So as you may be aware, Polaris serves as the basis for the RX 560 and with the 460 you had 896 stream processors however about a year later there was another Polaris 11 part which had 1024 stream processors and this was marked as the RX 560. Fast forward a few months and in the Asian market there was the RX 560D so this had 128 fewer stream processors, meaning the compute units were cut from 16 down to 14. The website heist.de has made a rather interesting discovery. AMD silently updated the RX 560 product page to show that there are two derivatives of this graphics card now. The first is 14 and the second has 16 compute units. What's more interesting is the original launch information of the RX 560 did not uh, mention anything about the 14 compute unit version. Now there's a couple of issues with this. The first is that once again in Asia there was the RX 560D. The D of course once again denoting the fact that it had lower performance. Unfortunately there are already reports of users buying the 560 and because the name is almost identical, well, actually it is identical, the only way you can actually tell the difference is by reading the GPU's product spec sheet on the particular GPU that you're buying. But basically, people are purchasing the lower-end SKU by accident and thinking they're getting a higher-performance GPU. Now, this could have been easily resolved by AMD enforcing AIBs to market the fact that it is once again the lower end variant that they would be selling. So yes, the blame does somewhat lie on AMD without any question in my mind. However, it also somewhat lies in the hands of AIBs as well because they should be much more forthcoming with this information. Now, before anyone jumps on me in the comments, Nvidia have done very similar. And I've mentioned several times before that Nvidia, especially back in the day, when it had so many different variants of graphics cards. I mean, for the love of humanity, I this is a small, you know, personal story. I actually bought, and I knew what I was getting into, just to clarify, but back in the day, I bought a 6200 Turbo Cash because it was really cheap. It was like, it was basically end of line, even when I was buying it. And I purchased the card because it was a really cheap PCIe GPU. And the reason I bought it was because at the time I had just migrated to a core platform. This is back in the days of like the, to the core two duos. And my previous motherboard had a uh, AGP slot. So obviously I needed a PCIe graphics card. So I bought this particular card because it was the cheapest card possible just to get the rig up and running while I was waiting for the 8800 GTS of a certain model to come in stock. And I was like, well, you know, I want to build this new PC because my friends wanted to buy, like, other components from me. Because I had a high-end Venice at the time, a 939, I think. And basically, people wanted to purchase the Athlon 64 plus motherboard plus graphics card from me. So I needed to get this other system up and running. So I just figured, hey, right, this card is like £15 or whatever it was. So I bought the 6200 Turbo Cash, and it was terrible. But I knew what I was getting into. Uh, the card literally could barely play Counter-Strike 1.6 at a decent resolution. However, with the name, you know, 6200 Turbo Cash, it sounds like you're getting a better GPU, when in reality, of course, you're getting a terrible GPU. And the same could also be said of NVIDIA back in the day when it came to, like, the MX440, uh, because... For those who don't know, the MX440 uh, and 460 and 420 
and they didn't have the same uh, shader feature set as the uh, normal GeForce 2s, uh, sorry, GeForce 4s, instead it had many of the same architecture as, as the GeForce 2. And even more recently, you've got also a whole bunch of uh, recent issues with NVIDIA who can't forget the GTX 970 thing. However, I don't like this. I, I personally really don't like the fact that there is not a clear you know, note to say, hey, this card has lower performance, uh, so just be careful, especially if you're going to be ending up paying a very similar pricing. Obviously, we're going to have to just wait and see with the cryptocurrency craze. And ironically enough, the 560D was actually released in, say, China for cryptocurrency for mining. So consider this more of a public service announcement more than anything. So once again, AMD uh, needs to enforce this. They need to release it as like the 560D or whatever they want to end up calling it. And furthermore, the AIBs themselves also need to be better at this. And hopefully, also the blame could be somewhat nudged on some retailers as well. So hopefully, you know, it's going to be clearer for customers. At the end of the day, customers are who, um, you know, are going to be purchasing this. Most likely, yes, if you end up buying a car, let's say for the sake of argument, you are buying a small form factor rig and you just thought, you know, you just happen to buy one for Amazon or eBuyer or wherever you happen to purchase it and you didn't realize and you got home and you loaded up GPU-Z and you thought, huh, what the hell? Why is it showing 896 shaders? And then, of course, it would take you a few minutes to realize, oh, you know, at most, at worst, even if you hadn't seen this video, it would take you a few minutes of, you know, Googling around to think, oh, well, okay, I, you know, oops, I'm going to have to uh, send the card back on the distance selling act or whatever. However, let's say that you weren't you and you were someone who wasn't so informed or perhaps you just did a quick rudimentary Google for a good graphics card or perhaps your friend, your buddy uh, suggested you buy a particular card. Well, then of course you would just simply buy the RX 560. You may not know that it's supposed to have X number of you know shaders, X number of ROPs, X number of this, X performance. Instead, you're just buying the card and you think you're buying the you know full experience the full 16 compute units when in reality of course you end up with a lower end skew and this could be even more harmful with the cryptocurrency craze and you know memory price and graphics card prices and you know you may just not realize it hopefully that's not the case and hopefully retailers and AIBs and AMD hope uh, you know work together to make this more clear for customers anyway speaking of things which not so much with the clear for customers uh, so this actually comes to us from a bulletin board system. It's PCOnline.cn. Uh, this is a small update to yesterday's video. So there was a individual who modded a Coffee Lake. Um, I'm sorry, who modded a Z170 motherboard. I think it was a gaming uh, titanium from uh, MSI. Anyway, that was modded and it allowed an i3-8350 uh, CPU to run on it. So that's a Coffee Lake 300 series on a 100 series motherboard, which, of course, Intel told us was impossible. Now, the user did do some modifications. He basically tweaked the um, uh, power distribution of the motherboard, and on top of that, tweaked the actual um, BIOS itself. There were some caveats because the actual processor uh, did function as normal, however, the inbuilt GPU did not for A, and for B, the primary PCIe slot didn't do that thing it's supposed to do when you put things in it, in other words, it didn't work. But there's an update. So, an Intel 6th and 7th generation processor is now working across several ZX, sorry, Z370 motherboards, and these include, but not limited to, a Asus Prime Z370A, an MSI Z370A Pro, a Gaming M5, a Gaming Plus, multiple gigabyte boards, as well as an ASRock board, and a colourful iGame Z370 Vulcan. And now, this, of course, is clear that the motherboard is quite happy to accept a plethora of different uh, CPUs, including a 7700K, a 7350K, a 7600K, a 6600, I'm sorry, a, a G, um, an Intel Pentium G4400. And apparently motherboard manufacturers are aware that technically speaking, the motherboard can do this, it can run it. So it's really just BIOS uh, issues and other little tweaks that needs to be put in place for this to work. I really don't like this. Um, honestly, I could, I'm actually in a way slightly 
slightly less miffed that you can not run a Coffee Lake processor on an older motherboard because you can argue if there are some, you know, um, power related issues, perhaps it doesn't overclock as well. I, what I would have preferred, actually, I'll tell you what I'd have preferred. I would have preferred Intel to have released a statement which said that we can't guarantee that you will get optimum performance running this. Um, so, for example, let's say you're running at 8700K on a Z170 board. If they said, hey, you can do it, technically, but it's going to be really hit and miss. You may have major issues. Overclocking is going to be problematic. You probably may experience some, um, let's say, stability issues, particularly if you're overclocking. You know, I'd prefer that. And uh, then, of course, people can just make the decision rather than the way they've done it. Because I, I do think that some motherboards may have had some issues, some of the cheaper ones, which might have been one of the reasons Intel have done this. But no one's 100% certain. And it does really appear to me that one of the reasons they have done it is basically just to make people upgrade their chips. However, the one that really miffs, uh, pisses me off, to be honest, is the fact that the... Uh, 200 and 100 series uh, processors, so for example the 6700K, will not work on a mother on a 300 series motherboard. And the reason that's kind of annoying is because obviously when the 100 and 200 series boards essentially become uh, obsolete and they won't be you know available on Amazon or whatever new, if you have, for example, a 7600K or whatever and that processor is still good, and your motherboard happens to balk, and it can happen, let's face it, nothing lasts forever, you know, you could have a capacitor which blows, and yeah, of course, you could technically solder on a different capacitor, but let's just be honest, if you could just buy a cheap motherboard, you probably would do that in most instances, so I would prefer to have that uh, backwards compatibility there just because. So, you know, let's just see what happens. I'm, I'm curious to see if Intel and slash or uh, motherboard manufacturers are going to actually say anything about this. Technically, of course, it doesn't require Intel to release a BIOS update for the motherboard manufacturers. Technically, Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, whomever could release a BIOS update which would allow for this to happen. However, I have a feeling, of course, that Intel would not be so much happy with them. And obviously, MSI and whatever company would not want to risk Intel basically raining a legal ton of bricks down on them. So, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, and bye for now.